video here, we're going to uh, use the uh, Gotham Steel pans, which I'm always pointing at to these little signs. Everything is non-stick, so I want to make sure that they are non-stick. So all the things that I'm making are going to stick without any added grease, butter, or oil. See, i got a pan already at mm, near 400. Not 400 necessarily yet. It's on medium. Got to cook on low to medium heat. Um, according to the company for food you don't oil up. So let's see, I have, I'm going to make salmon, which I've already soaked overnight with, uh, I put some honey, pure honey, and I put some salt and pepper, and you can put garlic if you want to. So I'm just putting a slice of salmon, and we're going to see how it turns out. Hopefully it turns out okay, it won't stick. Now the honey is not going to be slippery, so that's one thing that is... Talk about gummy, that's going to be really gummy, the syrup, or the uh, honey from the syrup on this. I'm going to add some lemon juice in a bit while this is on the pan, so that might act as a lubricant, maybe, I'm not sure, in, in a little bit. Um, but the honey soaked into the salmon, with a little bit of the um, lemon juice with some salt and pepper gives it a good balance um, now on fish I'm not so familiar with fish I cook fish but not as often as I do other meats but it shouldn't be that much of a big deal because I've made this before and it's turned out really really well so you just got to make sure you don't dry out the fish too much but salmon is um, it's a good tasting fish but you always have to watch out for uh, scales and Things like that. So, talk about scales, I just found some in this lid. But, uh, yeah, scales are a big bummer on fish. It's a lot of work taking those things out. So, that's when it's like taking little bones off of um, the sardines or even like chicken or so, but you gotta be careful. Always exercise caution when eating fish and like bony meats like chicken or so. But this should should turn out to be really well. I, I don't know if it's going to not, not stick. As usual, I'm going to use my uh, spatula here to um, do the flipping if possible. If not, I have a pair of tongs I could use to. I just don't like to use metal with these pens. Um, though you can. You can use metal. They actually say you could use metal because they're scratch resistant. And there's no problem. Um, they're oven safe up to 500 degrees. There's another cookware that, I forgot what it's called. Um, I have it in that little magazine here. But they say that they're, it's it's effective up to 850 degrees, which is, wow, pretty, pretty high. I'm even considering maybe buying a couple of pans uh, just to double check. But they also use the same color, maybe titanium ceramic, probably. I, I don't know, but they have a different name. Matter of fact, let me get the magazine. Who knows? I may even place that order just to check them out. Because uh, they say that they have a high heat tolerance, and it looks it looks almost the same. I won't say it looks the same, but it looks almost. Let me see if I can find it on these pages while this thing is here cooking out. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like. Here it is. Called Copper Chef. You can look it up probably. And let me see where it says. Update 150 degrees. Oh. Heat resistant to 850 degrees. They look kind of weird. They, they look almost similar. They have a metal bottom. They have this set here. I think I'd rather just get maybe this guy. And maybe one of the lids. That's about it. I probably wouldn't need to have so much of the other ones here. Don't really need that one. I'd probably get that with one of the lids. But 850 degrees is pretty pretty incredible. What's really funny is that another ad on this magazine shows something called Red Copper. And these are the same ones that Gotham Steel have. So they must have rubber stamped something on these, but they look the same. Literally the same. Same price. This is called the Red Copper. This one's called Copper Chef. This one's called Gotham Steel. 
that's uh, all about merchandising. Okay, so let's see. Now this thing we've been cooking with a little bit. Well, it's done a little bit. I won't say burn, but charred a little bit. I guess I'm not too familiar with finish. Yeah, so it's It's kind of hard really to burn. I mean, this, this the top part got a little bit crispy, but it's not burned. Um, but of course, you use the honey to give it flavor, so you don't want to dry it out. So another good thing to add to this, not only the lemon juice, another good item to use is I like to use. I like to use soy sauce. Not too much of that. Just to give it a little bit of a salty flavor. And one more item. Nice. Now we're not drowning this stuff in it. We're just kind of simmering it. Is teriyaki marinade. It gives a nice little flavor. Lemon spills here, so I'm going to clean this off here. So we're doing good. I think we're doing good. Nothing seems to be sticking here. Let me see if I can... There you go. Fish is not like beef where you can push it in and just get the interior to be well done. Fish is a lot more delicate. So it's really all about not drying it out. But I soaked the stuff overnight with uh, the honey that I have a good feeling that the interior of the fish won't be burned at all. It won't taste burnt, even though you see the crispiness on the outside. Um, that's just the outside. The tips we're looking at. This is going to be a very good tasting thing. So let's first find out that this doesn't stick. I, I don't think it'll slide off. I really don't think because of that. But you never know. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. I thought we're here to test this thing. Right? Let's see if this thing slides right off. Well, look at that. It slid off. You see that? That thing slid off. Now let me get one thing to this thing here. I'll give you my just my quick opinion on this. How the fish was fish is nice and flaky, you can see. Really flaky fish. So let's taste this puppy here. Taste this piece. Oh wow. Hmm. The interior is a slight semi-sweet and the hint of the lemon pepper wow this is really good fish really 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 good really delicate balanced not too salty with all the stuff that I added not too salty at all and it's very juicy as you can see that wow mmm wow I was uh, yeah I, I was pretty sure that the honey coated the inside and and I had some water inside the honey Dilute a little bit and it went inside so the fish was not going to dry and sure enough it did not dry so it's really really good and this was a success if you can see the only thing now now I'm not sure about this but how is the cleanup going to be okay this is a little bit harder I'm pressing a little hard on this okay so this I've never really had this problem before can you believe that I've never seen this so Let's try something. I'm using the nylon spatula to kind of clean this. Well, that's not really, it looks more like it's plastic melting. So let me try one more item. Before. I want to see what we can do with that. Okay, I've got some hot water in this paper towel. So I'm going to put it here. See what that does. Just hot water and a paper towel. 
Like this guy show. Okay. No soap. You gotta be very careful when you do this to get burned yourself. I, I'm, I'm actually very keeping my fingers around. Just the two top fingers I'm using here. But as you can see, just paper towels with some hot water. And this thing is already cleaned off. Wow, amazing. Just the paper towel. Wet paper towel with this. I didn't really scrub too hard. Uh, with the spatula I did, but not the paper towels. The towel stretch. Wow. That is almost perfectly clean. And I have to say that while I didn't expect the um, sauce to, to stick, it was honey, and so honey is kind of sticky. So, yeah, now that this is done, I have to say that this was a success. Alrighty.